Dear America, I find myself riding atop a borrowed velocipede over train tracks that have been converted into bicycle pathways. My cohorts on this track are my father and the owner of the bicycle, Dita. He is my uncle-in-law and a professional judge of some repute. He tells me my father and my- <clears throat> Alright, alright. Enough of this Ken Burns shit. We ride along the bicycle path, yelling back and forth like a game of telephone. Dieter yells back through my father that the path goes all the way to the Netherlands. On our route, we stop by a man-made lake to enjoy the view. The water is so clear you can see straight to the sandy bottom, which was brought in special. Dieter mentions a local ordinance that forbids dogs, as they aren't part of the natural life around a man-made lake. Germans are constantly battling blackberry and elderberry bushes, which are a weed here. Dieter tells me that cyclists and pedestrians will often stop to pick a few berries off the plants. Cooking time happens at a cafe next to giant sand sifters that were used to cover the lake bed in sand. Before becoming a strip of pavement and a longer bicycle path network, the Octrup to Rhine Railway acted as a gateway to Emsland, Tecklenburg, and Duisburg Quake from 1905 until 1968. Being a connection between the larger cities helped the relatively small towns grow as a side effect. For instance, Rhine's textile industry finally got a connection to the national rail line so they could supply anywhere in Germany. My father heads home to prep the evening barbecue and Dieter takes me to House Welbergen. This is a castle with two moats. Signs show that the castle was founded in 1282 by Herren von Welbergen, though a pieced together Google translation suggests it might have actually been started earlier in 1100 by the Metlen Monastery. Looking at the building, please notice these curved hooks. They aren't just decorations. The metal pieces are end hooks on long rods that run the length of the building. The intent was to keep the upper stories from spreading apart over time and eventually collapsing. If you see a building with big numbers, these are actually the end caps keeping the building together. Dieter points out that the bathrooms are on the rear side of the castle, most likely so guests would be greeted by the garden out front instead of raw sewage dropping into the moat. I found out these rooms were referred to as garter robes, and often had a clothing storage area in the same small space. The ammonia fumes would be so intense that moths would stay away from the clothes. One site suggested that this is where the word wardrobe came from. Ward, the moths away from the robes. In summer, people must have smelled lovely. Speaking of hot shit, Dieter drives us back to the barbecue in his Mercedes-Benz convertible. Note to self, become rich enough to buy a convertible and find a place to drive it that isn't Los Angeles. At the party, I help work the grill while drinking a beer. This is actually pretty close to what an American barbecue is like. Then for dessert, once again, I meet my old friend Waldmeister. This is Woodruff flavored green jello. I've come to find out that it still doesn't contain any real Woodruff, but it tastes much better than the Kool-Aid. The ice cream I was introduced to might have also been artificially flavored. Eine kleine Träne weinte sie, als ich sagte, ich verlass dich nie. Sie sah mich an und sagte leis wie leicht schon morgen früh. Eine kleine Träne weinte sie. Oh, 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 oh.